Hi, everyone. So you just saw a little bit about how the sausage is being made as we continue to try and figure out how to make these videos on a weekly basis more clear. I know a lot of folks have recognized the fact that they do tend to be very grainy. So me and the audio visual squad at Woodland Pond are working through some options. But today is uh, well, let's start at the beginning. My name is Michelle Gramolia, and I'm the president and CEO here at Woodland Pond, and this is my weekly address for a Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, April 9th. I've got quite a few things for our address today, and I'm going to start them with calendar-related items. So the first is that we've got a great presentation today at 7.15 in the pack. It's theater night with Joe and Fred and guest star Deborah Moore. Uh, we are asking that residents sign up at concierge uh, so that you, you we may have the appropriate amount of seating. Uh, you're not gonna wanna miss that. There are some details in the chat to clear and the newsletters. This Friday at 1 p.m. in the pack, our mental health and wellness presentations continue. And this Friday we will be bringing in uh, speakers from Compassion and Choices, which is an organization that helps advocate for uh, legislation in states related to the allowance for medical assistance in dying or MAID. This is something that um, really has become a rather prevalent conversation here at Woodland Pond over the last several years. Certainly not everyone is a proponent of this, but there are quite a few residents that are actively uh, proponents of medical assistance in dying. Uh, and New York State currently does not have a medical assistance in dying or made uh, legislation in effect. So that's not something that's a permitted practice in New York, but there are other states that do this successfully. And uh, periodically, our mental health and wellness task force brings those folks in to give updates to the residents that are interested, answer questions about what MAID is all about, and so forth. So that update will be this Friday at 1 p.m. in the pack. Starting uh, the week of uh, Earth Week, which starts really uh, Monday the 22nd, uh, two additional items have been added to the calendar beyond what you see in Woodland Life. And these are both for Wednesday the 24th. Uh, William Tabb will be giving a presentation during the current events hour at 4 p.m. called Earth Day for the U.S. and the World. And uh, that will be at, uh, again, 4 p.m. in the pack on the 24th. And that same evening in the pack, uh, we will be at 7 p.m. re-airing a video presentation that we aired in November to great success. Uh, this is a video lecture presentation by Doug Tallamy uh, from the Cary Institute of, uh, it's the, it used to be called the Ecosystem Institute, Cary Institute and so forth. Um, and it's called Nature's Best Hope, Conservation Starts in Your Yard. Uh, this video in particular was very instrumental in driving the work of our lawn, um, love our lawn, uh, lawn reclamation uh, task force. Uh, as you probably all know at this point, or maybe you don't, uh, we have hired a landscape architect to design four demonstration plots on our grass areas of the campus. Uh, to provide us with alternatives to grass uh, as we look for ways to be uh, more sustainable in the maintenance of the property. Uh, and there is a task force of the sustainability committee that's working on that. And Doug's video here was really instrumental and um, instructive towards our efforts there. So that again is gonna be on Wednesday, April 24th at 7 p.m. in the pack. On April 30th, uh, we are going to be holding our next quarterly health center family council meeting on Zoom. And for those of you that are not familiar with what this is, this is an opportunity for our health center families and loved ones to get together with several members of our executive team, uh, nurse leadership, social services, myself, uh, Philip Mail, who is our director of long-term care and licensed nursing home administrator, uh, we all participate in this family council meeting on Zoom, and it's an opportunity for loved ones of our health center residents that may not be able to necessarily advocate for themselves to come and ask questions and so forth. So if you're interested in attending that meeting and you are the loved one of a health center resident, 
uh, you can actually respond to the link that you will get this uh, video sent to you out on the listserv. Uh, one thing I will just note, this meeting is not for individual resident concerns. So if you have individual resident concerns related to your loved one, you should be contacting uh, the folks on your who is who in the health center, it tells you exactly who you need to go to with specific issues. Uh, speaking a little bit more about um, staffing and the health center uh, specifically, I'm not sure if everyone is aware of this or not, but the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, which are the primary watchdog and guardian of care that's provided in regulated long-term care settings across the country, specifically skilled nursing settings, they implemented an amazing tool maybe five years ago. It could be six, seven, I'm not exactly sure, but several years ago, they created what is colloquially referred to as uh, Medicare Nursing Home Compare.gov or something similar. You can Google it. And in that tool, it gives the users of the website, which is free, an opportunity to evaluate the uh, quality, the staffing, the health inspections of a potential um, long term care setting, a skilled nursing facility for their loved one or for themselves. And you can put in multiple facilities to compare yourselves. And the great thing about this tool, which we really, really appreciate is uh, for all of the indicators that are measured there, the quality measures, the staffing, the inspections and so forth, there are benchmark data that are provided. And so not only do we know on a real-time basis how we're doing compared to our own performance uh, in the past, but we also know how we're doing compared to our peer group. Uh, we just got the updated most recent staffing information yesterday for skilled nursing. And uh, I wanted to just go through this with you here because it's really, really great news. We also put this on our Facebook page yesterday. So you can see that there if you want to. It's uh, listed under a job posting. Uh, but just so that you can understand the magnitude of this. And again, Medicare compares the the staffing for all skilled nursing facilities across the entire country. So that's the data set. And when they're pulling staffing hours for this portion of their report in particular, it's coming directly from our facilities payroll records. So we don't submit this information to Medicare. It's they actually have contracts with the payroll providers to pull the data directly out of um, their payroll system. So you really can't manipulate these. So just to kind of to give you that that background, but this is the important stuff. Yesterday in the updated report, again, publicly available, and you can also see the numbers on our Facebook page where I, I posted them yesterday. Our total nurse staff hours in skilled nursing uh, for the current report came in at six hours and two minutes per resident per day. Six hours of nursing support provided per resident per day. The average in New York State compared to our six hours and two minutes, the average in New York State is three hours and 38 minutes and the national average is three hours and 47 minutes. So where we are staffing and paying staff to be here for direct hands-on care, it doesn't count vacation time, nothing like that. The independently provided data, and I think it looks at an 18 month period, the average amount of nursing staff that we are staffing for our skilled nursing facility is six hours and two minutes per resident per day Again, compared to state averages, New York State at three hours and 38 minutes and three hours and 47 minutes. So not quite double the averages, but certainly much, much greater. Um, if you look at the Facebook post, you'll see uh, we also go into the fact that our uh, there's, there's a subset of data there. Uh, it talks about RN hours, LPN hours, and certified nursing assistant hours uh, within that six hour total. And across the board, Woodland Pond blows uh, the national and state averages out of the water. I'll just give you one example. Certified nursing assistant hours per resident per day that we staff and, and pay in skilled nursing is three hours and six minutes per resident per day. 
the average in New York state is two hours and nine minutes. So round it to three hours for us and two hours at the state average. And similarly, the national average is two hours and 15 minutes. So across the board, and you'll see the same thing for RN and LPN hours if you wanted to look. We are so proud of this. We are committed to staffing at the highest possible levels. Um, and we just love to share this kind of data. Okay. The next thing uh, also related to staffing is we have a number of positions open, mostly per diem, so very flexible. This is just supplemental sort of substitute staff. Most of our full-time positions at this point are filled, but we have been recruiting for a full-time senior concierge position for days uh, since Lindsay Marquis became my executive assistant. Uh, we, we poached her from that position. And we're really looking for just the right person in that role. This is a critical first face of Woodland Pond. We really hope to find someone that is really engaged, uh, the residents feel are, is trustworthy and welcoming and so forth. So if you know someone that might fit the bill and is looking for full-time work uh, from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. daily, our rates are above market, our benefit packages are excellent, um, and there are tons of perks at work to be here at Woodland Pond. So if you know someone that might be interested in that uh, concierge position during the day, please direct them to our website to apply. The last thing I wanted to talk about today, very important. Some of you may remember uh, back in 2020 when we were in sort of the full throes of you know pandemic lockdown, we also had an election year and we went through an enormous amount of effort with the Ulster County Board of Elections to make sure that their voting rosters and their registered voting rosters matched up to the resident population here at Woodland Pond. And it occurred to me in conversation with Lindsay this morning that we are once again in an election year. And while the um, emphasis is not so much on absentee ballots this year as it was in 2020, we still need to encourage all residents to make sure that your voter status and your voter registration is up to date. And that if you want to submit for absentee ballots for the primaries that are going to come up in June, and then the national election that's going to come up in November, now is the time to act. So this morning, we went through the effort of pulling the paperwork that you need from the Ulster County Board of Elections to update your address to Woodland Pond. And also, if you are looking to submit an absentee ballot application, all of those forms are now at concierge. What we are going to be able to do is certainly we can help you complete the forms, uh, but the more important thing is we will collect them back from you completed by April 19th, and then we will deliver them to the Ulster County Board of Elections. So I will go over that again, and we will put this um, in the Chanticleer on Friday, but I just want to make sure that everyone understands that in order to be a registered voter in Ulster County, you need to make sure that if you've moved here, that you have updated your voter registration. That's how this works in Ulster County. So those voter registration forms, they're simple. It's just a one sheet paper. They're available at concierge. Go get one and make sure that uh, your voter registration is updated. Now, we are going to be asking the Ulster County Board of Elections for a roster of all of the folks that they've got showing as being residents here with their addresses, but a number of you have moved in, uh, certainly since the last election, and we wanna make sure that you've updated your voter registration. So you don't need to wait to hear from us. If you're listening to me and you've moved here since the 2020 election, and you have not updated your voter registration, you need to do so. Uh, so again, if you've moved in in 2021, 2022, 2023, or 2024, and you've not updated your voter registration, you need to do that. And you need to do that by grabbing a form from concierge, which we will collect back by April 19th. For our health center residents, uh, our staff will assist you with that. Uh, again, you don't need to wait though. And then if you are interested in receiving absentee ballots, you do need to put an application in as well. Those applications are also available at concierge. They explain to you what qualifies you to do an absentee ballot. 
It's not just everyone gets to do an absentee ballot. So you do need to put an application in for that. And it's going to be asking you if you're looking for an absentee ballot for the June primaries or for the national election or both. And you must complete that as well if you're looking for an absentee ballot uh, qualification. We will be here to answer any questions that you have. You can start your questions with concierge or with the activity staff in the health center. And we really want to support you through this process, but it's really critical and urgent that you get this done so that the uh, Ulster County Board of Elections has the opportunity to get all of your information updated in time for the June primaries. There will be more to come on this, but I really just want to encourage everyone. And this also means that if you have moved within Woodland Pond, since 2020, that also requires a voter registration. So update. So if you've moved from one apartment to another or from a cottage to an apartment or from independent living to the health center, all of those are considered address changes. Uh, the other thing that's really critical, so if you're a loved one or a resident that's completing these forms, and we will verify these before we bring them into the Board of Elections for you, the street address for the health center is 200 Woodland Pond Circle. The street address for independent living is for the apartments is 100 Woodland Pond Circle and the cottages have their own addresses. So this is just really for everyone to keep in mind, but very important. I would encourage you to get the form today or tomorrow and start completing that if you've moved here or moved within Woodland Pond since 2020. We want to support the voting process, very important. Democracy is very important, regardless of your political party. Uh, that is all that I have for today. I hope that you all have a great day. It's gonna be beautiful outside. Make sure you get outside today and I will see you next Tuesday. Bye.